Hey mga ka soldiers So it's been a while since I last uploaded a video in YouTube And now we have a chance to go to Arundel Castle By car ride, it's just 53 minutes away from Southampton City Going to Arundel Town Ooh, and look at that sunny weather today I think we're lucky because it's been raining since last week But don't be scammed, no no Might be sunny and full of sunshine But it's actually 3 degrees outside So of course heat tacked on the go i'm always wearing my fleece tacking so it seems like it's very thin but it's actually fleece inside it's kind of warm and it's really good for this kind of weather one of my favorite thing and i enjoy the most of my travel is to see that cotton candy clouds i really like it when the clouds is so white and then the sky is so blue it's just euphoric it's so pretty so we're actually here in arundel and it is a town in west success and the postcode if you want to search for it it's b and 189JW. As you can see, Arundel is charming, stylish, and full of history. The picturesque market town of Arundel in West Sussex is probably most famous for two stunning landmarks Arundel Castle and Arundel Cathedral. So, for today, we are going to the Arundel Castle and we will witness their one week tulip festival. There is actually a lot of things to do in Arundel, but for today because we came late around two o'clock in the afternoon so we're just visiting the castle and did you know that each year arundel plays host to some of success most popular events including arundel art festival arundel food festival and arundel cathedral's feast of corpus christy and magnificent carpet of flowers so we initially parked here near the arundel cathedral but we really don't have time to stroll around the area but we went directly directly to the Arundel Castle because it's already late around 2 p.m. and we only have like two hours to three hours to stroll around the castle because it will be closed around 4 to 5 p.m. As you can see, the town of Arundel is so picturesque and it's very, very charming. And if you're going for a public transport, it's not also a problem if you want to go in a bus. There's a lot of bus coming and going here. So while walking from here, I was in awe in the sight of the castle. That big door is actually the exit, uh, which I initially thought it was the entrance. So we have to walk all the way down to the entrance of the castle which is around five minutes but there is actually a car park in front of the entrance of the Arundel Castle but it was a good decision that I prefer to walk downhill although it's a long walk going to entrance but the sight was so amazing look at that see it is so beautiful I enjoy walking here facts about Arundel it is a combining 1,000 years of history with independent shops, contemporary art galleries, restaurants, cafes, delightful drinking spots, great attraction, and a thriving events calendar, plus outdoor activities from walking across the South Downs of canoeing or cycling. There is something for everyone. So speaking of art, I saw this gallery, which is really nice, and I was mesmerized at the back of it, I can't really see it in the camera it's a van gogh painting so i was like oh my goodness that was so nice so we passed by this antique store or oriental decorative furniture or something i got really curious so i said let's go and take a peek and it's really creepy going down this narrow alley but actually there's a store inside we didn't really go in the store but in the outside part we saw a lot of antique furnitures which is really nice I would have one for myself so in this part in my left side is actually a public loo that you can use for free and then in the other part is the Riverside cafe I really want to go there and eat but I said later because we really have to go inside the castle because we have limited time it is already like 2 15 this hour and then it's gonna be closed around 4 four or five today yeah. so this is the entrance of the castle and they have here the tulip festival and also on april 21 on sunday they have a plant fair so i already bought a ticket uh, which includes
includes the bedrooms and the garden because you can choose if you want to visit only the garden or you want to go inside the castle so you really have an option to choose and this is it i'm walking towards the castle and as you can see i was mesmerized by by this tree it is the first time that i saw this tree they said i overheard some locals are talking about it is called a dragon tree and how the flowers of this tree are falling like a cherry blossom and the color is so perfect it's like a pastel purple which is really nice so while i'm strolling around the area i'm gonna be reading the facts around arundel castle garden it is a fairy tale gardens exquisite is the only word to describe the Arundel Castle Gardens. From the tropical beds, the vegetable areas, or the newly renovated wilderness down by the lakes, the castle gardens join seamlessly a variety of styles and landscapes. Of course, the well proportioned fairy tale looking castle helps, but it is also the rolling hillocks, winding paths, and the secret rooms that give the gardens an exploratory and fascinating atmosphere much of the recent inspiring originality is due to the passionate endeavors of martin duncan head gardener for the last 10 years the story of the angel castle begins in 1067 and continues to the present day many of the original features such as the norman keep medieval gatehouse and barbican survived between the 1870s and 1890s the house was almost completely rebuilt and the magnificent architecture in gothic style is considered to be one of the great works of victorian england as i uploaded this video the tulip festival has now ended and there are late flowering tulips in the landscape alongside beautiful blue camasias together with white triumphator tulips in the white garden of the Fitzalan chapel rainy days sunny days there is always something for everyone to enjoy at the arundel castle they have also medieval festivals history days characters from history and the festival of history provide excitement throughout the season during april the castle gardens and grounds provide a beautiful setting for one of the largest displays of tulips in the country our spring plant fair has specialist nurseries with an array of plants and expert advice or visit in the late july and early august to witness six days of international medieval justing together with a large medieval encampment Ooh, that was exciting i will surely visit once more and experience shakespeare in the castle gardens in august oh that was exciting as well i like shakespeare too much so whatever the weather be thrilled by combat entertained by musicians amazed by skilled craftspeople learn history see custom character from history watch demonstrations of cookings and crafts in the tented encampments something for all the family oh and did you know that arundel castle has been used as a filming location for several televisions and film productions the bbc filmed extensively at the castle and its grounds in 1988 for the doctor who serial silver nemesis where it doubled for Windsor Castle. It also doubled for Windsor Castle in 1994 film The Madness of King George. Arundel Castle was also a location for the 2009 film The Young Victoria and the 2017 film Wonder Woman if you have watched it. The Arundel Castle is a restored and remodeled medieval castle in Arundel, West Sussex, England. It was established by Roger de Montgomery in 11th century. The castle was damaged in civil war and then restored in 18th and early 19th century. I was really excited to see the castle but I was way more excited to see the garden. I kept on saying wow i can't contain my happiness but i didn't really show it 
because I'm really shy because there's a lot of people but on your way inside the castle you can see the fountain but I went in the right side because I saw the peonies in here they are so lovely too. I like tulips but I like peonies more it's because of their pastel color and the flowers are more bigger than the tulips all right so let me tell you about the castle garden history so there were 14 acres of kitchen garden in the three main areas an orchard of five acres which contained frames for forcing crops such as sea kale rhubarb asparagus and potatoes the walled garden with a further five acres the walls being planted with peaches apricots figs pears plums and cherries and the borders with pears plums and cherries and apples also within the walled garden were forcing houses the peach house vineries and pineapple pits varieties of pineapples were grown including charlotte rothschild black antigua and montserrat heated pits were used to force beddings plants and house plants oh here we go this is one of my favorite part of the garden designed by isabel and julian bannerman the collector's earl garden was opened in 2008 by charles prince of wales as a tribute to thomas howard 14th earl of arundel known as the collector the garden counterpiece Oberon's Palace is a stunning pavilion that features a shellwork grotto and a fountain that support the golden corona when the water spurts. Have you seen the one? <laughs> Arundel Gardens is one of the glorious gardens to explore with surprises around each corner. Beautiful, award-winning, tropical and English gardens, the quirky, stompery and abundant kitchen garden warm glass houses with chilies grapes and lemons so more about arundel gardens so if you stroll through the grounds where you will discover different themed gardens the rose garden planted in contemporary style the chapel garden with white and cool colored plants the cutting garden with tender perennials and rare plants the renovated victorian peach house and vinery where exotic fruits and vegetables are cultivated the gardens and grounds are planted sympathetically and managed with an organic eco-friendly ethos to encourage wildflowers beneficial insects and wildlife the collector earl's garden this new formal garden is a light-hearted tribute to thomas howard 14th earl of arundel known as the collector it has been designed by isabel and julian bannerman with russell taylor as job architect and has been conceived as the jacobin formal garden it is in fact an imaginative recreation of what the collector earl's formal garden may have been like at arundel house his town palace overlooking the thames in london the dome pergola and fountains are based on those seen in the garden vista in the background of the famous mitens portrait of the countess of arundel in the drawing room here while the various gateways and pavilions are based on Inigo Jones designs for Arundel House. The garden centerpiece is the rockwork mountain planted with palms and usual ferns to represent another world, supporting a green oak version of Oberon's Palace, a fantastic spectacle designed by Inigo Jones for Prince Henry's mask on New Year's Day in 1611. Flanked by two green oak obelisks, these contain a shell-lined interior with a stalagmite fountain and glided coronet dancing on a jet of water. The garden is divided into formal courts with a center canal pond, tufa-lined cascade, and wildflower labyrinth. The planting is restrained with scented magnolia grandiflora, Indian bean trees, shrubs, and semi-tropical plants taking advantage of the walls to trap heat. Contemplate in the 14th century, Fitzland Chapel, burial place of the Dukes of Norfolk and their ancestors, ascend to the top of the Norman moat and keep the overlook some of the most beautiful downland in England and out to sea. 
discover the rich history of the Dukes of Norfolk, the Earls of Arundel and Surrey, and the castle from our friendly and informative guides. Enjoy the grandeur of finely preserved interior with fascinating furniture, tapestries, and rare collection of paintings by renowned artists including Van Dyck, Gunsborough, and Carnaletto. So from here, I will let you enjoy and watch my stroll in this spectacular garden of Arundel Castle. As we went inside the castle, I'm going to tell you about its history. So there are nearly 1,000 years of history at this great castle, situated in magnificent grounds overlooking the River Arun in West Sussex and built at the end of the 11th century by Roger de Montgomery, Earl of Arundel. The oldest feature is the Mott, an artificial mound over 100 feet high from the dry moat and constructed in 1068, followed by the gatehouse in 1070. Under his wheel, King Henry settled the castle and lands in dower on his second wife, Adeliza of Lovain. Three years after his death, she married William Albany II, who built a stone she kept on the moat. King Henry II, who built much of the oldest part of the stone castle in 1155, confirmed William Albany II as Earl of Arundel with the honor of the Castle of Arundel. Apart from the occasional reversion to the crown, Arundel Castle has descended directly from 1138 to the present day, carried by female heiress from the Albinis to the Fitzalans in the 13th century and then from the Fitzalans to the Howard in the 16th century. And it has been the seat of the Dukes of Norfolk and their ancestors for over 850 years. From the 15th to 17th centuries, the Howards were at the forefront 
of English history, from the Wars of the Roses through the Tudor period to the Civil War. Among the famous members of the Horde family are the Second Duke of Norfolk, the Victor of Flodden, Lord Howard of Effingham, who with Sir Francis Drake repelled the Armada in 1588. The Earl of Surrey, the Tudor poet of courtier, and the third Duke of Norfolk, uncle of Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, both of whom became wives of King Henry III. These were politically dangerous times. The poet Earl was executed in 1547. His father, the third Duke of Norfolk, only escaped the death penalty because King Henry XIII died the night before the execution was due and the fourth Duke was beheaded for plotting to marry Mary, Queen of Scots. There have been two cardinals and a saint in the Howard family, Saint Philip Howard, 13th Earl of Arundel died in the Tower of London for his faith. By contrast, his son, the collector 14th Earl, as his nickname suggests, was responsible for many of the treasures which can be seen today. The results of all this history are concentrated at the castle, which houses a fascinating collection of fine furniture dating from the 16th century tapestries, clock, and portraits by Dan Veik, Gunson Burrow, Maitens, Lawrence, Reynolds, Carnaletto, and other personal possessions of Mary, Queen of Scots, and a selection of historical, religious, and heraldic items from the Duke of Norfolk's collections are also on display. During the Civil War, the castle was badly damaged when it was twice besieged first by the royalists who took control, then by the Cromwell's parliamentary force led by William Waller. Nothing was done to rectify the damage until about 1718 when Thomas the Eighth Duke of Norfolk carried out some repairs. Charles Howard, the 11th Duke, known as the Drunken Duke and a friend of the Prince Regent subsequently carried out further restoration. Queen Victoria came the Osborne House with her husband, Prince Albert, for three days in 1846, for which the bedroom and the library furniture were specially commissioned and made by a leading London furniture designer. Her portrait by William Fowler was also specially commissioned by the 13th Duke in 1843. The Victoria rooms are closed for the 2024 season for major refurbishment. The building we see now owes much to Henry, 15th Duke of Norfolk, and the restoration project was completed in 1900s. It was one of the first English country houses to be fitted with electric lights, integral firefighting equipment, service lifts, and central heating. The gravity-fed domestic water supply also supplied the town. Electricity cost over 36000 to install, but splendidly carved chimney piece in the drawing room only cost £150. There is part of the castle that is closed and I think they are renovating it and refurbishing and it will be open for the public in the next year. So even from the keep in the site here, you cannot see the one from this side so maybe it's a surprise for the people who wants to visit next year so that ends my two and a half hour of stroll in Arundel Castle which I enjoy the most oh especially the garden I love the flowers and now it's already sunset um, we already ate in the Wanda Riverside part that I told you but I don't have a battery and now we are going home and look at that sun rays isn't it beautiful the sunset it is nine o'clock by the way and the sun setting here in the uk now is at nine o'clock in the evening so it's really late but it's still really lovely all right my dear soldiers until my next adventure thank you for watching goodbye <laughs>